You may or may not know his name. His name is Robert Vanella. He's an activist here in Delaware, and we've got a great interview with him. Next on The Hard Talk with Jaquem. Hi, this is your man, Jaquem Muhammad, and this is The Hard Talk with Jaquem. This is Jaquem Mohammed. All right, you know I'm back with the hard talk, and today I'm back down at the pit. And today I've got a great guest over here. You already saw it in the promo. You probably saw it on Facebook or Instagram. You already know who he is, but I'm going to give him his introduction. This is my man, an activist in Delaware, Mr. Robert Vanella. You give it up for my man. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having me in the pit. I'm usually in the bunker. Yes, right. I knocked into the, the bucket. I love it. We, got, we have to do this. This is the whole idea of it. We have to spread it out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we've got a lot of things to go over today. So we've got you for about 45 to maybe 30 to 45 minutes because he's getting ready to go down to Washington, D.C. tomorrow. And he's getting ready to do some big things there. Yeah, luckily, I think this doesn't come out until Friday. So this isn't going out. So I can, I can give you a little hint. Yeah. Uh, some of our uh, local uh, legislators should be prepared to see my face tomorrow. Yeah, that's so we'll talk to him about talk to him about a lot of things. We'll talk to him about Trump judges. We'll talk to him about Medicare for all. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk to him about a lot of things, and we're going to let them know that uh, we're here and we have things to say to them. I love it, man. Let me tell you something. One of the things that warms my heart is when we get a lot of good people like you and a lot of good people that's been in Delaware getting involved in the process and making sure that uh, their voice is heard. And what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, as you've been on my podcast, The Highlands Bunker, and you sort of understand that right now people's voices aren't being heard. That is correct. Uh, whether you look at citywide, in the state, or in the country, um, you know, there's small but very powerful, I call them clicks. Yes. Those clicks. I mean, that's one of the reasons my podcast is, you know, tongue in cheek called The Highlands Bunker, uh, <laughs> is because The Highlands uh, represents, I think, one of those very small but powerful political cliques. And if we all start getting involved and we pull more people into it and we show people, hey, you can make a YouTube video, you can make a podcast, you can actually go down and go into a legislator's office and tell them what you think. Exactly. Uh, and, and get like-minded people, you know, the, the small but powerful cliques will put up obstacles to keep you out of it. Mm -hmm. And we have to get ourselves out of those things and into a more broader sort of uh, uh, effort and organizing that's going to help people. I, I think you not only are you right on and dead on, but these silos that we were in in Delaware for a long period of time is going to stop because people are just fed up. They're, they're seeing that they're not getting the bang for their buck. They've got some wicked politicians out there that are only, only there for the corporation. Now, I, I will say this. If you're not there for community and corporations, we, we have no problem with a person making a dollar. I have a problem if it's always skewed to one side. And that's what we like in life. We want balance. Yeah, I mean, that you see that uh, in the city and in the state, most especially, is, you know, the folks who are incented to uh, make changes, to build things, to do things. You know, do they help everyone? Are they looking to alleviate issues and help people who need it to meet their material needs, like housing, like health care? That's right. Um, I would argue that they're not. I would say that they're done for real estate development, uh, for people to have money, to be able to spend their money. Um, and again, I don't necessarily have a problem with living your life and having fun. That's right. But again, we should be advocating for 
uh, incenting people and doing things that are going to meet the material needs of people, not uh, you know, make pockets of, of things that are nice so that real estate developers can make money and that people that have affluent jobs can go spend their money. And that's, and you're absolutely right. When I was at the Highland Bunker, uh, we talked about a lot of things. You read from a book there, I love that. Yeah. And so, it, are you on Patron? Uh, what? Uh, Patreon. Patreon. Patreon, excuse me. Yeah, no, no worries. So we're on uh, Patreon.com, the Highlands mm -hmm. Bunker. So it's a, it's a website, but you can also download a mobile app. Mm -hmm. All of my stuff is there. We have artwork up there. We have our podcast up there. Um, actually, tomorrow when I'm in D.C., I plan to do a few uh, sort of educational videos, sort of Activist 101. Right. Like, this is how you do it. This is what happens. And sort of break the spell of, like, what actually happens, you know, when you see a 30-second clip on television of somebody getting like you know pulled down a hallway or yes, somebody yes. yelling I mean you know, I think you're gonna see some today because the uh, House Republicans went in and broke up a, a secret meeting so when you see that stuff maybe I can give you a little behind-the-scenes look but that's all there on, on patreon you can also become a patron of the show I just send some stuff out especially for uh, patrons but we are also on iTunes so Highlands Bunker uh, on iTunes uh, it's under my, my producers Carl Stomberg uh, he put it up there so you can subscribe there and get updates as well. All right. Well, I, I love it. Well, you know, we actually here at the Hard Talk, we at the pit now, and you're in the lovely village of Dunley. How did you like Dunley? <laughs> I, you know, it, it actually reminds, I grew up in a neighborhood just outside the city. I grew up over by uh, where, where Conrad is. Oh, my, yes, my parents went to Conrad when it was high school. Wow. So I grew up over there. So I grew up in one of the, what I consider sort of like the first edges of suburbs. Mm -hmm. So it actually uh, it reminded me of the neighborhood I grew up in. Wow! Well, I, and I know you're in Trolley Square, and uh, tell me about Trolley Square. What's going on big over there? Well, uh, you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that they call 40 acres in between Trolley Square and the Highlands. But uh, oh wow! But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's um, it, it's 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 as advertised. You know, it's 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 a nice neighborhood. There's a lot of uh, you know bars and restaurants and, and culture around. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story though. Sure. Um, they just opened a new restaurant. Uh, Brian Sakura opened it. Okay. Guy, uh, Lafia, him and his, and his wife, they're excellent. Uh -huh. the restaurant's excellent. It's in the old, old banks right on Delaware Avenue, right in the middle of Charlie Square. The food was excellent. Um, but, you know, you can only put so many sort of like upscale restaurants in one place. Yes. You can only yes. do, you know, yes. you sort of see the same people, you see the same conversations and I, I, you know, I guess it's just what floats your boat but uh, nurse Susan my wife was a little bit um, she was a little bit down on it, it was a little too uh, a little too fancy well I you know I heard a couple of months ago that they were having some problems with some of the restaurants that wanted to expand over there some of the community members did not want the expansion uh, to some of the restaurants I think they were going up in height I can't remember which one the, well the one I remember most is uh, over the you know, I've been there 10 years, I think, 11 mm -hmm. years. Over that time, I know that there's been an ongoing thing uh, with Kelly's Logan House. Yes, yes. They have, and it was a live music thing. So when could they have live music? Were they allowed before and they didn't use it? You know, there's a lot of like back and forth of, you know, neighbors saying we made an agreement, we didn't make an agreement, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a big, there's a, there's a feeling of, you know, the not in my backyard. Uh, Always. You know, everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most, I think, most pernicious ones going on right now in the city, right near here, is on Lancaster Avenue, where they have a, a treatment center. Yes. Uh, are being treated uh, for addiction issues and mental health issues. Um, and, you know, there's a, there's a fight about, you know, trying to give our, our neighbors health care. And people don't want it near them. They say, you know, it increases crime or it increases litter or increases loitering. Of course, there's really no um, evidence of this. Every time it's been studied, you know, you don't see people um, getting treatment and also, you know, doing violent crime or, or, or anything like that. But people just don't like the idea of those type of things near them. But then where do they go? Yes. You know, these are our neighbors that need treatment. Where do they go? Well, Robert, that's great because I'm going to go to the board and that's where we're going to go to uh, right here. The board. So our next thing that we have that I wanted to talk to is a great segue. Marijuana recreation legalization. Are you for it or are you against it in here? In well, everybody, if, if people know me, uh, and this is my first time also recording my face and everything, this is good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm what would, would be called colloquially a stoner. Yeah, okay. So I smoke every day. All right, and there's nothing wrong with uh, that. And you know, I've 
it seems to me I have a couple of health issues, which it does actually help with. Yes. Um, I guess I didn't realize it was doing that until after I was doing it this long. Uh, but the fact remains that it's, it's a fairly benign, uh, for adults, it's fairly benign. Certainly, drinking alcohol is far worse uh, for you. Mm -hmm. uh, smoking cigarettes is far, far worse. Uh, and we allow those things for reasons that I think we all understand. That sort of liberty, you can just do what you, do what you want. Right. Um, you know, marijuana has a, um, a bad rap for a lot of different cultural reasons, going back to... Um, you know, reefer madness in the twenties, and you know, yes, it does. It was associated with a certain element. It was associated with, you know, jazz musicians and uh, Mexican farm workers, and right, and hippies, and of hippies, course. Of course. Yeah, you have to pin them on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On something. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that, and, and I think you're seeing it more and more as states start to legalize, uh, and it becomes sort of a regular course of business somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody goes out to Seattle or California now. Or Colorado, you know, you just walk into a shop and you can, you mm -hmm. can buy a few cigarettes. You can buy what you want. You go home. You go to a party. You chill out. You watch a movie. You just do it. Right. Well, as that starts to happen over time, it's going to become very difficult then to say we have to have it illegal here because obviously it's what what you thought it was going to do. It's not doing. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm a supporter of full legalization as soon as as soon as possible. I think the only um, caveat to that would be. Uh, how it is set up, uh, I'll give you an example, in Ohio, okay. when it was put on the ballot, it was actually the, the advocates uh, of it actually voted against it and, and rallied and organized against it because it, it, it was basically a sort of a corporate takeover of it. Yes. It was going to say the state can say who can do this, right. the state can say who can do that. Um, here, a permission uh, society. Basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we have, um, you know, a lot of, we have a, a large uh, ex-police officer community here. I, I know that's... That's right. Well, I'm going to, I'll talk about it, right. But, um, but yeah, so they have their own, um, they have their own motives and their own ideas of how they would like to keep things illegal and why. Um, so that's, a, you know, that's, that's something we would have to overcome here and you have to be careful about, you know, how the laws are written so yes. that it doesn't just become a new mechanism or a, you know a new mechanism for for control there you go and I and, and and everybody over here everybody knows that I'm a former uh, law enforcement officer from New York City and when I ran for state rep uh, a lot of people were very surprised that I was for it and I don't smoke and I don't drink and and I, I don't like alcohol and I don't like marijuana I don't even like cigarettes I don't do any of those things but one thing I am against is the permission society. As long as it doesn't affect me, I think you should be able to do whatever you want to do. Now, I will say this about marijuana legalization, and I hold nothing. I agree with you 100% because I've seen it in other places when they legalize marijuana that former police officers, former correction officers, former sheriffs, were the only ones that were being growers or dispensaries or whatever. They, they really locked everybody out from getting into it. And that, I felt, was, was so disingenuous. Yeah, and that was, that was basically, you know, for all intents and purposes, that was the scheme that was going to be the law in Ohio, which is why advocates actually organized against it. Right. Because it shut people out, it corporatized it, it handled a lot of the power to the police. And um, yeah, that's not the idea. Right, and, I, and I'm totally against that. And I know we're, we're almost going to a break, but we got one more thing before we move on to there. Safe injection sites. Uh, uh, this is great, because this goes right into what I was going to mention about just legalization or the, the permission society like you yeah. talked about. So uh, the country of Portugal, I uh, suggest everybody try to look into this. The, Portugal has had for a long time full decriminalization. Of drugs. This goes for the hardest drugs, heroin, intravenous drugs, everything. Uh, but they have a very aggressive, um, proactive health policy. They go out and they find people who are struggling. They, are, they have many different things for them. One of the things they have is safe injection sites. Um, so they've been doing it for a very long time. Uh, it's it's quite successful if people want to go take a look. And this at, is Portugal. This is Portugal, who also just uh, two weeks ago elected a socialist government. I don't know. <laughs> like, not to throw that in there. Uh, left is best, everybody. Uh, but no, I, I, I agree with that kind of stuff because again, we can't we can't we're not going to uh, use law enforcement 
and prisons and vagrancy laws and uh, we're not going to treat uh, sick people that's not going to that's not going to it's not a cure for their sickness right it's 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 just it's actually making the bonds of our society and our culture worse that's right uh, so I, I i do agree with safe injection sites for in a very controlled way in the in the model of uh, what portugal is. yeah you know um i'm a big fan that we if we're going to have safe injection sites and like yourself it should be in a very controlled way and now the biggest thing that most people say is is that is this going to bring down my property value in most cases it probably will bring down your property value if you don't want to be near a safe injection site but at some point in time we have to think about the people that are hurting we have to think about how are we going to be as a society how we're going to be viewed about Wow, how the people who are hurting and how we treat those people, and that's important. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I, we, a lot of these things come down to the to the to the housing value and the real estate value. You know, I I don't know. I mean, if you put, you know, if you're treating, uh, you know, drug addicted folks in a, in a medical clinic or a, or a professional medical environment, um, you know, I would think that that could be the same with whatever kind of kind of people you're right. treating. There's nothing inherently um, dangerous. Uh, or violent about somebody who's suffering from drug addiction, just the same way there's nothing inherently dangerous or violent uh, about somebody who's suffering from any kind of mental illness. It just we, we know that that's a fact, so we kind of have to break that spell uh, for, for people to to be able to institute some of the things like you said, safe injection sites and different things like that. Um, but it's a yeah, it's a tough it's a tough argument to make. Well, I, I it's a very good argument. And it's a very good discussion, open discussion that we're going to have to have. So I tell you what, we're going to be right back and we're going to just go to a couple of commercials and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. YSM Insurance. Let us help to put the pieces together. Have you been thinking about Medicare insurance coverage? Life is full of important decisions, but you don't have to make this one alone. YSM Insurance. We would be happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one to discuss your needs. Please contact us at 302-229-6376. YSM Insurance for your Medicare options. We are Kamaj Entertainment and Fitness. We're back with the hard talk with Ja Kim. And again, we're back with m Mr. Robert Vanella. Uh, listen, back to the bunker. Tell us the Highland Bunkers again. www.patreon.com slash the Highlands Bunker. Uh, we're on iTunes at Highlands Bunker. Uh, yeah, consider a patronage. Take a look at our, our work up there. Uh, like I said, the last um, episode we dropped last week was about... Um, particular pockets of poverty in Newcastle County by census track. I think that's interesting for people who are yes, I did look status, statistical sort of wonky-ish. <laughs> um, this week coming up, I think the day this is released, we're going to have one with um, House candidate in Claymont and Arden, Larry Lambert. Yes, our boy, Larry Lambert. Yeah, that's he's my man. man. He's our man, yes, too. Sir. And uh, we were lucky enough uh, that night he was in the bunker to get a call from uh, probably what is one of the top organizers in the entire country. Uh, she's the executive director of Justice Democrats, uh, Alexandra Rojas. Oh, and I do get, and you know I do get emails from Alexandra <laughs> yeah. Rojas. Yeah, so if you guys are familiar with Justice yeah. Democrats, uh, they're a group that started as uh, Bernie organizers, but they organized for AOC in uh, New York. They organized for Kerry here, um, and they're doing incredible, incredible organizing work all over the country, and we were very happy to be able to talk to Alex for about 20 or 25 minutes. Excellent. So before we move on anything, I do have to give a plug out to, because uh, one of those commercials was my wife's, Yolanda. The Real Talk with Yolanda is going to be back on Comcast 190, Comcast 190 in the Wilmington area, and she'll be back on the second Sunday. She's got a lot of information about Medicare, Medicaid, especially the, during this time of the open enrollment. And next weekend, you will definitely see Out and About with Josie Roy. We produce that here at the DIN Media Studios. We also do that here at the Pit in Dunley. Now, I'm just going to, you, you mentioned something about uh, Larry Lambert. You know, I'm a big fan of Larry, and we've worked on many projects together. 
what other local politicians do you like in Delaware? Well, this is a great time to bring this up because just today, and it'll still be, I guess, a hot topic when this comes out, sure. was uh, an article in the News Journal uh, by Sarah Gamard. Uh, about uh, all of the leftist insurgent Democratic candidates who have announced uh, for state office. Um, so, uh, in no particular order, uh, Eric Morrison. Eric, big shout out to Eric. Eric Morrison. <laughs> uh, we got to get we got to get him in. Uh, we Medina. Have Medina. Wilson Anton give money to Eric and Medina. Mm -hmm. um, they've both they've both sat down with me in the bunker, so we have some long uh, form interviews with them. Good. Uh, I feel like I'm going to miss somebody. Uh, well, we, we Sarah, already mentioned Larry. La Larry, Sarah, right. Sarah, Sarah, McBride. Sarah McBride. She's mentioned in the, in the article today. So I, I really, um, what, what I'd like to do is, if, if you guys hear this, go back. If you haven't read it, read, the, read, that, read, read that article from this week. Um, and pay, pay special attention to the reactions from um, both party officials and the incumbents in these, uh, in these races. And, and think about what I was talking about before about clicks about small mm -hmm. clicks and think about who you want to represent you like who yeah, represents absolutely. your ideas because you really want to look into these local these local candidates well let me tell you something uh i was one of those people i think we you know we really started it in 2018 the 2018 uh, race in delaware was a lot different than the 2012 2016 because you have a lot of people like myself and other people and larry larry ran in 2018 as well that ran that had no political background or had no political desire because i when i ran i had absolutely no political desire i just thought that we had a bunch of mutts running in the race and when we have a bunch of mutts running in the race that are uh supposedly politically connected or whatever our communities suffer and they suffer every single time you elect those so with the people that we not mentioned today you know uh, the people that were mentioned, you might want to check them out. And if you are tricked to believing that somebody can be an election year environmentalist, automatically now you're an environmentalist and you care about, because we had a thing over here with the landfill at Minkwadel, and I just saw all these election year environmentalists. We had so much EJ stuff, and if you don't know, that's environmental justice issues on the Route 9 corridor and the Route 13 corridor that weren't addressed for over 30, 40 years. But because they saw the wave, now some of these incumbents are now becoming uh, what we call environmental um, election year environmentalists. And don't be fooled, Joe. Don't be fooled. You've already been fooled by Trump. Don't be fooled by the locals. <laughs> yeah, and I think what you know, what you hear most often uh, from the folks from the insular sort of cliques is that there's a particular way to have to do things, and you have to do them that way mm -hmm. because that's how they work, quote unquote. And uh, we don't just for everybody out there, we don't have to stand for that. No, we don't. We don't have to do that. No, we if, don't. If you have uh, interests and needs in your community, and and you can organize uh, and and find folks to represent you and, and organize outside of that. I have to tell you that will, we have people, and that will work. Um, it's very difficult. I'm not gonna. Right. I can't lie. I we mean, can't, right. I mean, we're 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 we're, we're in, that means you're we're knocking in, on doors. We're in pits. We're in pits. We're in bunkers. <laughs> we're knocking on doors. We're going to DC to yell That's at people. Right. It's it's there's a lot of things happening. But but again, it, it, we can do this. We do not. People That's will right. tell you that there's yeah, a particular right. way or there's a particular framework in doing things, and there isn't. Um, there's, there's, uh, and that's what's exciting about those progressive challenges. This is something uh, when Larry was in, we talked about, and we talked about it with Alex uh, Rojas on the phone. The only way to keep these incumbents accountable is is to push and push and push all the time, all off the time. election cycles, off elections, going to their offices, uh, knocking doors, and telling people, you know, find out what people are, are, are interested, you know, what their needs are and what their lives are like. Um, this this can be accomplished. It just takes a lot. Of work. And I will I will also give another plug too. Uh, I was interviewed by uh, the news journal, so they're going to do an article that'll be out in a couple of weeks about Dunleaf. And we were inter and I was interviewed by a great young lady that, and it's going to be a great article because you're going to learn something about Dunleaf that you did not know, and what's happening in the 16th RD or the Route 9 corridor that you may not know, you may not hear because some people are scared. Let's be honest, some people are scared. Some I think because more than some. 
they know that even if you lose the election, that you can win the narrative. So some people understand that elections aren't only won on election day. They're ongoing, like you, what you're saying. Yeah, the thing I always, um, the, the thing I always sort of preach is that elect electoral politics is part of a bigger process. You know, you need to organize people. You need to have do activism on the issues that are most important to the people you're speaking to at the doors. Um, you need to produce media, alternative media, to get the message out. We're that is right correct. Now. Right now. So That's electoral right. politics is one thing. And <clears throat> again, even if you even if you don't get a result that you wanted in the election. Uh, if you've worked hard enough, you, you see that momentum in the larger picture grow and grow. Yes, it has. Now, I do want to get uh, uh, just one thing. Uh, we talked about the local. Now, we'll talk about the presidential, Democratic presidential candidates. Right. Who are you with? Bernie. Bernie. There's no, there is no one. There is no other. Bernie you know, Sanders. For Bernie, we're, we, so, what I was just describing in, on a local uh, level is why there's no one else but Bernie. Um, what people will tell you who maybe make the Elizabeth Warren case um, is that, well, she can put a framework together within, that's how we normally do it, and then mm -hmm. we'll do that. But it's very, you know, having an idea and putting a framework down um, within, this, within the structure that put us in the material situation we're in, maybe I'm not, I'm, I prefer someone to say, we're going to take on that structure that puts that's you in the right. situation that you're in. We're going to guarantee you your health care. No, there's no equivocation. We're going to cancel your student debt because we shouldn't have made money off of you to begin with like that. Agreed. We're going, you know, these are the things. We have to do these things. And we're going to organize people to do them. And again, this is the other thing people talk about. Bernie, you know, what's he going to do? What's he going to get done? Well, I don't know. Nobody knows. But I do know that to get those things done, he's the only, him and that movement are the only way that's going to happen. So I'm, I'm Bernie right down the line. Well, listen, I, I, I like a lot of things that Bernie says. I like a lot of things Corey says. And, and listen, most of, the can, most of the Democratic candidates I actually like. Uh, there's very few of them, and I said I wasn't going to uh, put them on Facebook or on Instagram who I actually like because I'm really not, you know, on that right now. I'm really concentrating hyper-local about our local races and what's going on in Wilmington and Newcastle. Now, I know uh, we, we, we have some good people that are running for Newcastle County Council. And I'm going to tell you that most of the incumbents, now I want to say this because somebody said something the other day on a Facebook post. When I say most, that doesn't mean all. Am I right or wrong? Uh, most does not mean all. Right. Most does not mean all. But most of the incumbents got to go in Newcastle County Council because I have seen their land use policies have been atrocious. Both me and Nancy Willing and, and others have been out there and seen these policies have just been terrible. Now, I know we're supposed to get a 7.5% tax increase. And for us in Dunleith, if you don't know, Dunleith gets its water from Wilmington. So, just like a lot of other places, we're not part of the inner Wilmington, we're part of the greater Wilmington. Yeah. So, we have a sewer system, Fairfax is like that, Brandywine, uh, the, the Brandywine Town Center is like that. They have a Wilmington address, but they're not really part of Wilmington. But we also got a 3% water tax. So now we've got a 7.5% from Newcastle County that the council approved. And now we got a 3% from there. And no provisions for senior citizens. No provisions like a, a set-off for senior citizens. And Dunleith has a lot of senior citizens still here that actually bought these houses in 1951. That's bad. Yeah, I mean, again, there's, there's no focus on... It's, it's always looked at as a budgetary issue because there's no no one looks at other streams of revenue. That's right. And uh, as people know who follow sort of any kind of politics or uh, in, within the city or in the state know that uh, a, a, a lot a lot of money flows through this state. Uh, yes. A lot of it's very secretive. Yes. Know where it's going. And um, my issue has always been with the amount of money that that goes through here, both corporate banking money. Uh, legal fees and and licensing and corporate licensing to to say that we don't have money to you know make sure seniors have a break on their water 
make sure that the public schools are every public school public is, schools oh. to make sure every public school is as good as uh, Sanford or, or Tower Hill or, or Tower Hill, Hill. right um, it, it really is it, it's, it's not that we can't do it it's that we we have we do not have the political will I know and, and, and let me tell you something Robert I agree with you too 100 percent on that I'm 100 with you some of the a lot of the stuff that's going on is so grimy and filthy and messy I think uh, Representative John Kowalko just mentioned the DE turf thing down there. And uh, man, did y'all voted? These people on the 150 General Assembly, they voted for a bill and didn't know what was going on. At least John Kowalko had the chutzpah, as we can say. He had the cojones to say, look, we voted for something, and this is to a developer, and one of these people are in the General Assembly, his brother. Good Lord, why have we got this? The Delaware Way has got to stop. And listen, the Delaware Way is no different. I said this one your show. No way. It's no different than the L Illinois Way because we got people in South Carolina. We got people in Illinois that watch my program. It's no different. We, no different than the Flint, Michigan Way. People in power want to stay in power. And you out there have to start voting with your heart. And voting with your heart means you know that if your brother, sister, or cousin hasn't been doing a good job, stop voting for the family members that haven't been doing a good job and vote for some people that's going to look out for the community. Yeah, you mentioned John Kowalko. I always use him as an, as an example because, uh, because he didn't have an, a big organization behind him. He was basically fighting a fight all by himself yes, he was. For, for 10 years or 15 years. Um, he was able to be marginalized by the status quo and the mm -hmm. clicks in Dover. Um, but what you're seeing now is he, you know, he held the, the torch for us when no one else was there, and now, you know, we, we have to get behind that because he's a watchdog. I mean, he's telling you the things that they're trying to do, sort of behind the scenes, to just keep that the the, the architecture of the status quo together. And that's what we're all doing. You're right, absolutely. I, you know, I like to say that. We're the bell ringers. We're ringing the bell to tell you that things are not okay. Things are not right. And you have to have those bell ringers out there to tell you so that you can pay attention to things that matter. You a lot of pay attention. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of stop making politicians celebrities. They're public servants. I worked 21 years in law enforcement. I was a public servant for 21 years. I was not no better than you, and actually, I worked for you because that's how my paycheck. Let's stop making them celebrities. Let's make them those public servants. And the more that we can get that, a government for the people, by the people, and listen, with the will of the people, I'm going to add that one on there, that's going to make us a great democracy. Yeah, I mean, like you said, if, if you see issues, uh, what the folks in the status quo want to tell you to do is that there's nothing, we, there's nothing you can do. Um, we can maybe make an incremental change in a couple of years or have an idea, uh, but that's actually not true. You know, there is something you can do. That's the, that's the important thing. Like you said, if there's a family member or somebody you voted for before, or most of the time, it's people don't vote. Right. They don't oh, get it. Lord, because they just throw up their hands and yes. there's nothing, nothing can be done. And uh, that's all by design. I mean, you, you feel that way because that's, the system's working, right? Right. We don't, have to, we don't have to stand for that. That's right. We can organize. Uh, we can have our voices heard, and we can put pressure on the powerful people, and uh, and maybe move a couple of them out of power. That is that is correct. Now I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit because uh, if you if you need, if you ever been in the pit, and a lot of people have, I have not made him do any uh, bench presses. Usually when we get guys down here, I make them do the hundred pounds there and the hundred and fifty. Uh, no, but today I did not goodness. make Robert do any bench that presses. I, you know what I said? I said I, I wore Because he looks so I wore, nice wore, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to ask you, um, and, and you're probably seeing my, my bass guitars and the, and the keyboards here. Who is your favorite band? Wow, you you you, clip, you you clued me in a couple minutes ago that you were going to ask this, and this yeah. is tough because I like all kinds of different music. Yes, sir. Um, but you gave me some time to think about it, so I'm going to tell you that um, that Peter Tosh. Oh, was Peter Tosh! Backed up, backed up by uh, Ravi Shakespeare oh, and Sly Dunbar. Sa if you don't here's know why Sly, oh my God! Here's why I'm saying this because I love blues music. I love old old Delta blues. I love Chicago reggae. blues, but reggae it, uh, sort of takes that 
blues music. It takes that yes, rock music, like like the Rolling Stones did, um, and it has a has like a just a righteous righteous message. Uh, uh, so uh, reggae and rock steady is some of my favorite music because it has all of those aspects. And I think um, you know, I, well, I, actually, I, I actually Peter Tosh is the prophet. I mean, well, let me let me let me just say this: If you grew up in New York or any place that has a big West Indian population, if you don't know who Peter Tosh is, if you don't know the Whalers, because you probably heard of Bob Marley, but you probably didn't hear Yellow Man, Peter Tosh, Sly Dunbar. Sly Dunbar, was, um, as a bass player, you know I'm in love with yeah. Sly. You know that. So uh, Sly and Robbie. Yeah, Sly right and Robbie. Pocket. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, uh, this week. My favorite band right now, this week, is the Ohio Players. And I say the Ohio Players, and some people would say, well, Earth, Wind & Fire. And I love Earth, Wind & Fire. Uh, we're talking about retro bands. Yeah. But I love the Ohio Players because I would like for y'all to go back and listen to some of those albums like Fire, like World Love Roller Coaster, Skin Tight on there, and listen to the other songs that's on there. In fact, I would even say this. A lot of Earth, Wind and Fire songs sound like they came from the Ohio Players. Very underrated band, Sugarfoot and them was, was bad. Check out the Ohio Players. Now I'm, I'm going to ask you a, another quick question. Uh, since you've been in Delaware and since you have been in this climate, I know that now we've have some organizations that are more progressive like uh, Delaware United and, and Network Delaware and other organizations. Have you seen it ever like this, where people have the potential to change on policies? No, no, I haven't. I mean, I, I <clears throat> so I've lived here my whole life. Mm -hmm. I grew up just just outside of, of Wilmington and Richardson Park. Um, I lived in Newark when I went to the University of Delaware. I lived in Newark. I've lived in Wilmington now for back in Wilmington for about thirteen years. Okay, so, uh, and I've always been somewhat political. You know, I. I Followed it. I knew it was happening. I've always voted. I've never been this into it mm -hmm. since uh, maybe the last three years, say. Um, but I've never seen this type of sustained organizing pressure. That's right. Whether it's campaign, community organizing, um, whether it's like you said, Network Delaware, Delaware United, uh, the the resurgence. What I think is a resurgence of the uh, of Eugene Young's group, the Wilmington Urban League. Um, you know, you've seen a more active. Well, they've uh, the the uh, there's another criminal justice uh, center. For, center for yeah, justice. smart justice <laughs> ACLU. Yes, you've seen them very. And active. hold on, the 16th RD, the most progressive uh, Democratic committee in in, in nice. Uh, Delaware. Nice. There you go. Yeah, I mean, you really <laughs> haven't seen. Uh, you know, we, we had some some uh, progressive folks run in uh, in Sussex County. That's right. Uh, you know, guys like Don Allen. Shout out Don. Yeah, that's uh, right. But. So yeah, I mean, it, when you do, when when you have the kind of politics and you're fighting structural obstacles, status quo, powerful people, um, elites, right. people elites with a lot of power and a lot mm -hmm. of money, you're going to take a lot of L's. That's right. And Before you get a lot of wins. Yeah. So you have to be ready to. You have to put things in perspective. It's about sustained momentum. It's about organizing, growing the growing the organizations that you have. You know, Drew Series at Network Delaware does. A, just a phenomenal, phenomenal job with that. Big, big shout out to Drew, man. I haven't been going to De Network Delaware stuff in a while because I've been concentrating on the Route 9 card. But big shout out to you, Drew. We're going to pull him back in. I'm pulling back See, listen, um, the one thing that I've always said is, is that as long as you front load and make sure that you get those out there and you, you, you're doing the door knocking that you have to do and one or two and three times, not just one time, and forget about it. Uh, Every race, race is winnable. Every race is winnable in, in Delaware. I, I want to also give a real quick shout out to uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, last week I got uh, uh, something from a young lady in Columbia, South, Columbus, South Carolina that wanted me to do an, an issue about why their um, gas in the ghetto is so much higher than when she goes into other neighborhoods. Now, I was telling her that I don't feel the same way here in Delaware. You know, you go to Wawa on, um, over here on Memorial Drive, it's the same, basically the same price you go in Claymont or Hocus. It's the same price. 
But down there in the southern states, I, when I researched it again, I got somebody from Tennessee that said the same thing. And we're talking about 15 to 20 cents more in, in those things. So we're, we're actually, big shout out to you in, in uh, South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina. I'm going to do a story on that because actually I have to go to Columbia, South Carolina because my father was actually born there. Forgot about it, but he's a New Yorker. Forget. But, oh <laughs> but we're actually going to do a story on that with Columbia, South Carolina. But we don't have that problem here in Delaware. But Delaware is not as cheap as people think it is. And and, and the reason why I say that is because everybody thinks that our, our uh, housing is cheaper here. And right now, I've seen eight um, three-bedroom uh, houses going for thirteen hundred dollars to rent, yeah. and that's a lot comparable to some of the stuff that in New York City, in Brooklyn or Queens. So, and when I go into the to the supermarket, the prices is the same here as they are in in New York. So a lot of people thinking because we're the second smallest state that everything's cheaper here. Those days are over. Yeah, they spread it around. I mean, they're able to attract uh, a certain kind of person to the state because of the, there's no sales tax. Mm -hmm. The property taxes are very low. Uh, the income tax... Uh, comparably. Com compar relatively. Yeah. Re the relatively low. Yes. Um, but that is, you know, it's, it's coming from somewhere. That's yeah, right. It doesn't make it doesn't make your groceries any less. Expensive. That's right. Um, it doesn't, you know, it, there's a lot of things that it doesn't... The... the most people don't realize the benefit of those. Whatever, whatever tax breaks there are here, they're usually not for you. That is correct. Uh, that's a good point. Robert, that's a very good point. Whatever tax breaks there are here, they're not for you. It's the old George Carlin line, right? Oh, yes, you know, yes. It's all a big club. Oh, you're my not, God. You're not in it. Now, <laughs> this, is, this all a big club, you're not in it. George Carlin was one of the geniuses yeah. believe you me Dick Gregory George Carlin those guys were geniuses Absolutely true. and they were telling you the truth they was ringing the bell they were the, bell ringers yes they were bell ringers just like you big yeah. shout out to you Nancy uh, the other thing that I, I wanted to say is because we have a lot of apartments we have a lot of houses for rent here in Dunleaf and the prices are pretty getting pretty expensive yeah. and when somebody says oh I want to come to Delaware because it's cheaper in Delaware, let me tell you something, like like Robert said and like I said, it's comparably maybe a couple of dollars, but you got to bring all of that. Where are you going to get a job? Where where are you going to work? Because uh, Transportation's a big one. Transport, well, Carl, you know I'm on DART. You yeah, know I'm yeah, always I, on I, DART. Yeah, Carl, Carl and I had this conversation <laughs> when we talked about some of these pockets of poverty because at least some of these, one was on Route 40, uh, one was on Kirkwood Highway in the Limestone Road area, and mm -hmm. one was sort of right around this area. And at, you see that at least DART, as, as, as sort of mediocre maybe as the service is, they're still sort of on, on bus lines. That's right. Now what do you do when you get off of that? And you have now you have to have a car, you probably have to lease it, that's the most expensive thing you can do. Yes. Now you have to, the insurance is not cheap either. So again, you can look at certain certain fees and taxes might be um, you know incenting you here to do certain things but they're not for you that's you're they're absolutely for, right you know what I mean and you know if you know uh, dark first state I'm always at the meetings on there I was part of this still part of the coalition to bring the hub back to Rodney Square even though we got a new hub being built uh, the, those particular things always make a difference I we were just in Atlanta a couple of months ago and Atlanta has the martyr down there and that's a terrible bus line yeah. terrible I've heard bad I, I'm like <laughs> I cannot believe all you people move to Atlanta and you got a terrible bus line and not only that if you don't know this Atlanta's roads the way they have their interstate system was built on racism here's how it was built it was built to keep black and white neighborhoods away from each other so they actually if you go to Atlanta to get from point A to point B it, you gotta go all the way around that's why they got a lot of traffic there all the way around to get through those things because the mayor Hartfield he made sure to keep this type of status quo so it, to all you young people out there that want to leave and go to other states and go you better check everything in that state before you break out yeah there's a great story just recently and I wish I could remember where it was I remember the topic it was you know the Atlanta Braves baseball team moved their stadium to the suburbs 
but the new uh, soccer stadium for the uh, Atlanta FC was moved to the southern part, which is what was like the racial segregated part. Uh -huh. And it talks a lot about people moving, there's, and there's a, there is a lot of um, scholarship on just how the way Atlanta was laid out. Oh, and yes. You're exactly right. It's it's uh, it's chilling to see. It's, oh my gosh. That's right. But I will give this to Dart on the 15 bus. And you remember, I always use the bus as my second car. I refuse to buy another car. My wife and I share one. <laughs> That's right. I, I rode the bus today. That, there you go. I love it. I refuse to buy another car because when we came down here, we had three cars. And now, now we have one car. I refuse to buy one if I can get a better public transportation system. That's how committed I am to public transportation. I think it's important. It's imperative for our planet that we don't all get in cars and be one single occupancy in Wilmington. Now, I got to say this. The traffic coming out of Wilmington lately at 5 o'clock is terrible. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I'm looking oh at the my game. God, you are you are lucky. I will tell you this: uh, about yeah, a couple times a year in the morning, I'll have a doctor's appointment. It's not in the city, mm -hmm. and I'll have to say go to Newark mm -hmm. at eight thirty in the morning. It's the most uh, miserable experience of my life. <laughs> I'm like, so I, I never, I always remember why I stopped, or why we only have one car, why I hardly leave the city because it is not a pleasant. You all, you all out on these Newcastle County roads, I feel real bad because it's not fun it's not fun at all well we get it all the time because we're it, we're done like this between route 9 and route 13 so when we're on memorial drive we're going down 13 friday evening oh my god five o'clock and now route 9 has a bad traffic problem uh you know we get a lot of the trucks going to the port but more importantly when it's coming out at five o'clock going south um, between Rogers Road and Memorial Drive, well, between Rogers Road and all the way down past Collins Park and Swanwick, we're getting so much traffic. And I believe it's because I-95 may be backed up. People are trying to get around it. Come out further south somewhere. Right. So, you know, uh, there's, there's, you know, we can't build more roads because the more roads we build, the more traffic we get. It's like a, it's like a guy saying that he's getting heavier, and he says, "Let my pants out more instead of going on a diet." You can't build more roads because you'll get more traffic. As soon as the road is built, it's already obsolete. So, um, hopefully, we can get a we can get a resolution to that very shortly. We're almost out of time, but I do want to get to one more thing. Uh, we we talked about. Uh, we talked about a lot of stuff with candidates. I got the board over here. We talked about a lot of stuff with candidates. I want to ask you this question. I gave this to another person we interviewed uh, two weeks ago. What's more important, financial education or, I, or a higher education? <laughs> I think I stumped him. <laughs> Man, I, I, yeah, you, so, so you should have asked me this one. Other than to give me time to think about it. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I think that uh, I, I think a financial education is a little, you know, it's it's more uh, elementary. Like you need that. If you don't have that, um, it's hard to do anything. That is correct. It's hard to get yourself together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't want to knock. I'm somebody who doesn't really knock higher education, and especially for me, and I was in I was in the humanities, and people sometimes say philosophy. You was in the humanities, oh, oh, science, liberal yeah. art. I, I was political science as well. See, so, see, there yeah. we go. Like, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> anytime I see but, another but, poli sci, oh my god. But uh, you know, history, <laughs> history, sociology, all that kind. Of, I, I actually think that there's uh, there's important things happening in, in in them. They actually help this sort of shape your idea of the world. Yes, sir. What you're going to do. Um, so I hate to diminish that idea because I got a lot out of it. However, what? if you don't have, and I was lucky to have sort of two parents that uh, they taught it by modeling it. You know, I saw how they dealt, you know, when I was old enough to sort of figure out what was going on. So I sort of saw how they dealt with the money coming in, what went out, how they, if they bought, you know, with the, how they were careful with this or bought groceries or whatever. And I, and I don't think, you know, without that, it's hard to use whatever, um, you know, whatever education you have or whatever, whatever, if you don't have some idea of how you're going to manage your, your affairs. I, you know, one of the things that I've always said that, and you're right about that, I'm not diminishing anything from 
uh, you getting a bachelor's degree or you getting a master's or PhD. But we have seen time and time again a lot of people with degrees who are poor. We have seen a lot of people with degrees who don't know how to manage the financial and after 40, 30, 40 years at that job, they've realized that they should have maybe owned a business maybe join the entrepreneurial, maybe learn something more about the stock market, maybe get into the financial, because we, let's be honest, whether you, you, whether you believe that we should go more socialist, this is a capitalistic market here in, the, in America. In fact, I would even say that the capitalism is over democracy. Democracy is like the little brother here, is really capitalism, unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I mean, I, I, I hope that, you know, coming back to the political end of it, I mean, there's, there is a lot of, um, there's, there's a lot of schemes that capital has, has so, put on to people. Yes. So not only that, they've sort of, uh, you are, you're less apt to be taken advantage of by one of capital's schemes if you know what they're scheming. That is correct. And that's important. And that's, and, and let me tell you something. It's right now we're at 50 minutes. This is, I am so glad that Robert was able to come out here and- I'm glad to get the invitation. And come out here and get into the pit, get into Dunleaf, and let's just give one more plug to Robert's podcast. And it's at- Highlands Bunker. Uh, so it's at patreon.com slash the Highlands Bunker. We're on iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter at Highlands Bunker. Uh, so if you like that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm gonna be putting some stuff up probably Tomorrow, when I'm in DC, so when you see this, you can pop on and uh, watch some videos and see what I uh, what I got into uh, tomorrow in the Hart Office Building. Oh, right, in the Hart Office Building. I've been there, and let me tell you something. Uh, if I didn't go here, it would be the Las Vegas because I'm a big poker player. If you don't, if y'all don't know, Jack Kim plays poker, and I love my poker. But it would have been Las Vegas or Washington DC, and believe you me, they're the gentrification in Washington DC is is way worse than they have in New York City. Oh my god. You you have people here, three hundred and twenty thousand dollar condos, and the, right down the block there's a guy sleeping right over there. So forget about it. It's it's crazy what they did in Washington. I'm gonna get back to y'all. We'll be back on, on the second Sunday of November, both the real talk and and the hard talk, both me and Yolanda, and of course this Sunday, make sure you tune in to Josie Roy, Out and About with Josie Roy, on channel 190, Lapa TV, and I think she comes on at 4 o'clock, we'll be on at 1.30 two weeks from now, she'll be on at 4 o'clock. This has been Jaquem Muhammad with the hard talk, down in the pit, with my man Robert.